Hey guys, it's John at John's Films. A couple weeks ago, I did some render tests in SLI and non-SLI configuration DaVinci Resolve. I got a lot of questions back. Hey, what about timeline mode? So today I've got for you timeline mode with many configurations across a couple different computers. So I hope it helps you as you're making decisions about what to edit in as well as what configuration of hardware to buy. Today we're going to test three scenarios. Those three scenarios run straight uh, out of the camera, out of the camera with light color and effects, and then we've got full color noise reduction and effects. We'll see that on a Windows machine that's running monitoring with Cam and MSI's Afterburner. We'll have OBS doing screen capture and DaVinci Resolve obviously running. Resolve will have proxy mode off, render cache off, and no optimized media used. All the footage used is 8-bit, ultra high def, H.264 from a Panasonic GH5. The test configurations that we're going to use, we have four of them. The first two will be on my Threadsmoker workstations, 1950X, 64 gigs of RAM. In the first configuration, I'll have one 1080 Ti. In the second configuration, I'll have two 1080 Ti's. Both of them are going to utilize the three NVMe M.2 drives to separate the operating system and the run environment. Third configuration will be on my Mini-Me productivity machine. This one's just a Ryzen 5 2400G. It has integrated uh, Vega 11 graphics and it is running 16 gigabytes of RAM with the standard SSD. And you guessed it, I'll be adding a 1080 Ti to it to see what the difference is between uh, the integrated graphics and the discrete graphics card. Okay, so now I will turn off my color and effects, check my DaVinci Resolve. I am running 11080 Ti on Threadsmoker currently. Playback, I've got my proxy and my render cache set to none. That'll be the same for all these tests. And now render straight out of camera. We can see occasional stutter, nothing really to pay much attention to. Works very well. Uh, looks good. Now I'm going to turn on my color and effects as we step into the next section. This section has both uh, this dynamic zoom, some transitions, and color. It's a static photo it's trying to zoom into. You notice the graphics card down here is starting to spike and hit pretty hard. It looks like the processor is not working too hard, however. And finally, we're moving into the last section, which has noise reduction as well as, see the movement down here, uh, noise reduction as well as transitions, and it's holding 28.5. Um, it is dropping frames. So now it's really dropping frames as it's getting through this additive dissolve. Yeah, so this is tough for a single graphics card. And now we're recording in SLI mode. You can see both graphics cards here in Afterburner. We will turn off color and effects to get started and get going. You can see it's streaming along just fine. Stuck at 29.97 and playing perfectly as you'd expect. Both graphics cards are pretty bored. Now I'll turn back on our color and effects as we move into our next section. This section has both color effects and uh, here a dynamic zoom. You can see the dynamic zoom uh, pulling again really smoothly even with the transitions and effects. Everything looks really good. Graphics card is hitting a couple times uh, with some heat because of the special effects that are in place. Fast forwarding to our noise reduction section. This includes color, noise, and effects. And when I click play here, we'll see it kind of lags at first. It thinks it's at 29.97. Uh, here it stutters for a second until the hardware gets to read ahead far enough that it can quickly stream through it. Now if I start right on a cut, I really see a difference where it drags for quite some time as it tries to catch up with it. But once it gets going and once it's reading ahead, uh, it's able to process faster than necessary to play it. Now we're jumping to our Mini-Me machine with integrated graphics. We'll check and you can see it's got the RX Vega 11 integrated graphics on it. Again, our render cache, our proxy mode are both off. And starting with our color and effects off, we are already dragging down in the four 
frames a second. Thought it caught up, but it uh, it hangs. It is pretty painful. It is not something I would edit against at all. Jumping ahead to our next test, you can see I'll turn on color and effects, and this is where it really becomes evident that this is unusable. You do need a discrete graphics card of some sort. Uh, this just won't scale at 4K footage. I imagine if you're doing some 1080p work, you might be able to get away with it. Uh, you may still have to render and transcode beforehand so that you can uh, get it going. Even that's going to be painful, though, and the, the transcoding would take quite some time. Now we jump to our noise reduction. It's almost a joke to move here, the transitions. Um, I'll hit play, and nothing happens. Uh, processor starts to spike, speed goes up, heat goes up, but um, nothing happens. Quite painful. Now I have Mini-Me, my 2400G Ryzen platform with integrated graphics. Now has a discrete graphics card in it. If we check the processor, we can see that it's already running a little warm just having to load up this application. Graphics card was down at 26 degrees Celsius. Starting this with the discrete graphics card, you can see I get to 2997 in the scenario with no color and no effects. It is running okay. It does look like it gets a little choppy. The readout thinks it's spinning at 30 frames a second, but in fact, uh, I've got kind of a jumpy interface. I'm now adding color and effects to it. Again, through the dynamic zoom as I hit play, you can see that it's now uh, kind of spinning ahead and then getting clunked up. The whole time it thinks that it's 30 frames a second, 29.97, but really the output, and it's probably slowed a bit by the OBS. Here's some transitions. Uh, the OBS screen capture will put an overhead on this, so that is part of this, but um, I really think this four core 8 thread 2400G is not strong enough to be an editing rig here. And this noise reduction is just painful. As I start in it, especially if I start right here on a cut, uh, I've got zero frames a second for quite some time there. I don't think that this is necessarily usable. Uh, if you allowed proxy and read ahead, it's probable you could get by with this. Um, maybe do a a half proxy and then allow for optimized media and of course if you were to pre-render this it would take some time so we'll try it here at a half resolution of proxy and see what it looks like um, loads up here we go we can see exactly what's going to happen through our four cores notice it's showing six there's eight threads that are running in here a little bit better maybe uh, still thinks it's running 30 frames a second, but really, uh, you're going to need something that's clocked a little faster and more cores to be able to spin through some footage. Likely a 1700X would be the best bargain buy right now. I think I saw it on Newegg today for 180, uh, new in box. And here you can definitely see that it is thermal throttling. Uh, as it gets locked up at the top, it has to cool off. And that's the result. And as promised, here is an average of three runs in each of the configurations, rendering a 4K, 8-bit colored, with effects and noise reduction. You see that the integrated graphics took 56 minutes on average to run. That's 3,363 seconds. That was forever. The uh, single 1080 Ti inside the Mini-Me server took a little over 11 minutes on average while a single 1080 in the Threadripper machine came in at six minutes and three seconds average. And finally, in SLI mode, we were able to get it down to 449. In fact, it hit that exact 449 three times in a row. All right, so after that, I think we can all kind of look at this and gather some opinions. Of my opinion is I would probably spend a little bit more money on a processor uh, then I necessarily would dump it into a graphics card. It looks like an 8-core processor, maybe a 1700X or a 2700X, might be a great choice for a rendering machine. Kind of gets you that balance between cost and output. And then I'd put some sort of mid-range, I wish I had a few of them, 1060, 1070 Ti graphics cards uh, to test to see if there's some difference there. But 
Um, if anybody has any of that hardware, I'd love to see your output, see if you've got any, uh, you know, kind of results looking across that, because I really am interested in whether or not uh, if I build more machines, uh, which ones, what graphics configuration I might put into it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the numbers, and let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer them in the comments. Thanks.